Okay, so here's how you get the new T-Motor with the Cube Mars motor controller on it. You can tell these are a little different by having a four pin uh, CAN bus connector. It's a CAN high, CAN low, CAN high, CAN low. Um, we've been having some trouble with these things because we couldn't get them to talk via something like TerraTerm over the UART. Uh, so we started using Cube Mars's actual upper computer. They call it uh, V1.3. Here's how get it to work. Hook things up so you have power and ground comes into the normal XT30. You've got a little JSTGH connector here for UART ground RXTX. Um, the ground RXTX is going to to a USB to serial adapter. I believe this is one of those like Silicon Labs um, ones. Uh, plug that guy in. Uh, notice I don't have the motor powered up yet. It's coming from these leads, so this voltage will be the power to it. Um, we go over to the Cube Mars V1.3 tool. Uh, you can get this from their site. It's really tricky to find, but if you find, I think it's like the AK10 or the tab for the R link, there's a, a download for this. It's a 67 megabyte files, like very weird, executable. Um, but open this dude up. Still again, nothing powered up yet. Uh, that's pretty important. Uh, always fun warnings from uh, unknown publishers. So we run it. This is the kind of screen you get. Uh, it's default in the Chinese. There's a button down here to switch it to uh, English. So slide that over, you get it in English. Uh, you can see um, all the different menus here. So it, it seems kind of like they did a little bit of a mashup between the VESC tool and what they were originally doing, which was from kind of Ben Katz's uh, MIT mini, mini Cheetah stuff. In fact, there's still some like menus that kind of look a lot like, um, where is it? Somewhere in here, there's a uh, one of the tabs you can basically like hover over a, a help button that says VESC help. Um, anyway, how we uh, get into changing uh, UART. So like I was saying, we had a problem with TerraTerm running these things and I'll give you an example of what we were seeing before. So say you run TerraTerm, get my serial port, uh, switch it to that guy. The baud rate on this one, I believe is 92.1600. Um, so set that, uh, nothing. Everything's hooked up. What I'll do is I'll slowly turn up the power on this until the motor controller current turns on. So I'll go to like 20 volts. Oh, and now, see, we don't quite get like clear messages out of here. So we've got some issues with like some characters that, what are these characters? I don't quite understand how those would work. So we've not been able to like change can IDs or anything like that via TerraTerm. So that option for us has, has not worked. Um, that said, Let's go back to their their setup. I'm going to turn the motor controller back off. Okay. Um, to get a list of, of serial devices that are connected, uh, this little drop down here doesn't have anything in it until you hit refresh. When you hit refresh, it shows the two serial ports that are on here. This one's connected to COM5. This is like a really awesome feature that... What is... Why is that happening? But I'm on COM5. I'm going to hit connect. It shows connected down here, but it doesn't show like any like firmware or anything like that. And again, the motor's still powered off. So connected question mark. Um, but I'm gonna go back to my the MIT control tab. I'm gonna hit the debug button. What that does is it opens up the serial terminal here. So anything kind of like what was coming through TerraTerm is gonna come through here. Um, with that, I'm going to power up the motor. So we'll go up to 20 volts again. Okay, so you'll see this pop-up come up. So it says that I'm in MIT mode. <laughs> that is. Uh, the connected driver's in MIT mode now. Um, but you can now see these are the parameters that that you can actually change. And this is the kind of UART command that we used to have with the old AK-80s. Um, with this, I found the to send commands, you have to be quite careful not to just type it and hit enter. Uh, you do have to hit something like, uh, let's, we'll do a quick encoder calibration. So encoder calibration, when you first wake up uh, a motor that's not had a motor controller on it for a while, or, or you've moved the motor controller, or you changed the windings, uh, that's, it has to basically re recalibrate the encoder. So when we do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to type in calibrate, space, and then hit the send command, 
boop. And what it's doing now is it's checking the phase order and it's gonna move the motor output just by a little bit. Uh, so it's basically phase locking around to uh, calibrate the encoder on the, on the motor itself so I can do commutation. Um, so it allows for really nice servo control. But yeah, now it's actually running that. You'll see it's basically making a lookup table that shows for every electrical angle. So it's it's energizing every electrical phase. Um, and it's for every electrical angle, it's doing a, a position output so that it can map that later on whenever you try to say move forward. It knows where it is, knows where to, what coil to energize. Um, once that's done, we want to go into setup mode because I'd like to change the CAN ID of this actuator. So setup, space, send. And this gets us into new menu that is the the kind of the setup for it there's a couple parameters you can change in here it's a little limited but for off the shelf it's, it's more or less fine if you're trying to take these off and and move them onto other motors <laughs> you may need to do a little bit more work uh changing your own firmware on these eventually but for off the shelf this is what we got uh the thing i'm interested in is the set can id this originally used to have these fun um prefixes so it says prefix the prefixes are no longer <laughs> really prefixes it's just the actual thing uh it used to be like you'd type i42 and hit enter and that would have been it but now say if i want to change this to uh can id of 41 i'll have to type set uh can id oh no let's get down in here set can id um space uh 41 space uh send it okay so that sent it doesn't really tell you any verification here but you do get basically re-updates the table so you can see that this one now is can 41. Uh, so that's how i've been able to get this to work so far i'm about to test this with our normal robot setup we talked to these things over can uh, so that's a totally different video but uh, if you're trying to change the can ids on on a new AK80-9, or I think it's the same for like the AK10s, uh, AK80-6s, like it's kind of all the same. Um, this is how I've gotten the upper computer to work so far. But thanks.